Hi guys, welcome back to my friendly neighborhood. Okay, I'm pretty sure we're on, well hopefully be the last episode. I should, well, I don't really mean hopefully, I am actually really enjoying this game. Um. <laughs> right, that is locked. I like the fancy thing it does with the gun. <laughs> And then there's something back here. I am I'm George. Nice. <laughs> this is a main area, so. What do you do? <laughs> Aha! I opened this up. Unlocked with the purple. How? How does it that work? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just unlocked a cardboard hole <laughs> with a real key. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh. This whole area is tripping a special kind of ball. There's fake children noises coming from the pool. What? You all take so much. And I've not hurt you. Not the actual health. <laughs> There's literally nothing in the pool. It is just on our way to somewhere better. Nothing happened. Oh gosh. Oh, this was on his picture thingy, wasn't it? Wasn't that the first picture or something? Hmm. I don't have any... Of all the things I took pictures of, that book wasn't one. I thought about it as well. I was like, ah. Nah, that wouldn't be a thing. It's a, yeah, it is. It's a thing. Uh, box office report. The City Tribune, Saturday, January 1st, 1983. A puppet winter song, the eighth film in the My Friendly Neighbourhood franchise, opened over the holiday weekend to an underwhelming 1.4 million box office, signalling that the film will fall far short of recovering its 25 million budget. Whoops. What's that say? I really don't want a cheeseburger. Oh, I really, I'd really want a cheeseburger to go. Got it. For some reason, I thought it'd say something profound, but it's, it's literally, they're just ordering with place cards stuff. Weird. Huh, okay. The most annoying thing about those guys is that you just can't take them. But on the other hand, very easy to uh, to take down. Okay, so it's either I go through the pool area and shoot a bunch of people in the face, or I go that way. Oh, she's gonna be awake, isn't she? It's me. You're very annoying. 
Okay. It is. I'm not even going to try because this is this is literally my worst nightmare. This is memory with numbers. So, <laughs> I picture. <laughs> A picture. <laughs> a picture. A picture. <laughs> and a picture. And we're done. <laughs> Do I care that I'm cheating? No. <laughs> Sue my ass. Okay, let's go do this puzzle. I will not be the only one who writes this shit down. I will actually will not be the other one. <laughs> okay. This is number one. Push. Then two is the very strange dog art. I wish it sounded like something was happening. <laughs> Three is the Picasso-esque block painting. Four is the weird triangle circle thingy. And five is the fruit. Fruit, 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 fruit. Yeah. <gasps> fruit, Roxy. Fruit. That's not fruit. Why did I... It's not gonna let me do it now, is it? God damn it. You see, even with the pictures in front of my face, even then, I still do it wrong. Oh. Strange thing. And then, fruit. Yes? Yes. Oh, thank God. That puzzle piece. Cool. That was not as hard as I needed. I wish I could stand on all your heads and bathe in your blood. <laughs> okay. There's something left in here then, isn't there? Ha! Yeah, got it. Is this it for this room? No. Uh, I, well, I didn't really, um, I didn't really explore this bit. Friend Liliana got me all upset about her. Oh, I can open all three doors. There we go. Then I stopped at base. Then we started laughing at each other. Hey. Hi. You're utterly terrifying. If you didn't stop banging on the piano like that, my ears were gonna start bleeding. Play to that. Uh, no. Play to that. I can't read music. <coughs> Get off me, you bitch! <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, um. I assume? <laughs> We're going to play for the masses. Oh, that's what these gigantic holes are for! Well, that's questionable. 
<laughs> right. Locked with an electric latch. Okay. Fine. I guess I'll go out and do it myself. Huh. Okay. Um, July 15th, 1983, cancellation notice. Mr. Gerswald, we are writing to inform you that effective immediately, the show My Friendly Neighbourhood has been cancelled and all the production company MFN Studios has been dissolved. All assets and equipment, including puppet performers and the studio lot, remain the property of the City Network Broadcasting Group. All employees have until the close of business on Friday, July 22nd to vacate the premises. <laughs> Excuse me. Respectively, Lawrence Black Soul. <laughs> nice Black Soul. Vice President of Programming, City Network Broadcasting Group. Roof access. Nice. Here I come. Here comes Speed Racer. That'd be more appropriate if I'd actually like eaten one of those chocolate bars first. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is safe. <laughs> this is the safest thing. Do roof accesses have, um, do they need to have like bars now that you can clip onto for like safety reasons? Is that a thing? Or is that just in a, like a couple of films I've seen? I feel it's a thing now. It's like you need to clip a safety harness on, don't you? <laughs> oh wow, we're really going all the way up to the top. Man, I would not want this job. <laughs> Joey said earlier about the longest ever ladder. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh wow, someone was actually up here. We're not done. Oh my lord. Where is your safety harness? You know, as someone with a massive fear of heights, this is like enough. We had a screwdriver. <laughs> this whole time we have been devoid of all the tools we needed. But this is the one moment when we actually had the tool <laughs> for the job. Gordon, you don't have to do this. I don't want you broadcasting, Ricky. You're gonna hurt kids. Hurt them? Gordon, we want to help them. They need us. You need us. For what? For what? Gordon, look at this city. The buildings are dark and the streets are empty. No one knows how to be a friendly neighbor. It's a city of shuttered up hearts and they need someone to let in the light. I don't think that's you, Ricky. You know why I think we got canceled? Why? Because people like darkness more than light. Why would they do that? Maybe it makes them uncomfy because it shows how messed up they are. What are you talking about, Ricky? I'm talking about our show, Gordon. We show them how to be friendly, and they hate that because they're not friendly. I don't think that's the problem, Ricky. Really? Are you sure about that, Gordon? Do you really think the City Network suits care about anything except their bank account? Do you really think people won't take any excuse to ignore their own issues? Come on, Gordon. We both know, deep down, you want to be friendly. Do I? I mean, I have helped every large puppet that Sorry. hasn't attracted me. I'm sorry, that is a couple of broken oh. legs at least. <laughs> if I'd landed in water, it would have been another okay. thing. Where are we? Oh, God. The 
thing is, I'd agree with the sock puppet, except every message that the puppets themselves have been giving out have been absolutely terrifyingly awful. <laughs> like, you don't beat someone's face in. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The heck? Oh my god, are they ghosts now? I have a map. <laughs> yeah, I have that kind of map. God. Oh, hey! Is this like a last stand kind of thing? Uh, have I got a tick anywhere? Mm, my triangle key's still got use. Yeah, we'll save there, just because I don't want to redo that cutscene. Starting me off on the save. Okay. Hang on. Can't go in there. It's so dark I'll probably trip over a stage light. Okay. Emergency lockdown. Cool. Hello? Hello? Gordon? Ricky, I'm here. Oh, Gordon, thank goodness. So, what are they? Bad puppets? Oh, Gordon, I really hoped you wouldn't find out. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> but we were all curious. What do you mean? We wanted to know what other shows had that we didn't. We'd never been allowed to watch television before, but after we got cancelled, no one was around to stop us. Okay. So we turned on one of the old sets, expecting to see something amazing. But it wasn't amazing. It was... mean. It felt like we were dying, Gordon. We all got a little twisted then, but some of us... Okay. Great. Then how do I get out of here? Well, there's... Uh, th th there's an elevator somewhere. Uh, should be at the end of that hall? It said it's locked down. Oh, that means you'll have to pull the security release. That's on the other side of their stage. No, of course it is. If I ever get out of here, I'm gonna make you into a hat, Ricky. Oh, I believe in you, Gordon. Just do your wham-blam, fight the puppets thing. Give them the old ABC one, two, three. Thanks for the encouragement. <laughs> right. Ah, oh, convenient flashlight is convenient. Okay. Uh, oh, that is a nice flashlight. I like that. That's a good flashlight. <laughs> I can't see that. Uh, reflection, part two. Oh yeah, I've got part one. Driven by a restless spirit, I go on up. I go up on the roof. And there, above the wreckage of the city, I see the stars, pure and beautiful, and very close. Something about them stirs a vague memory in me, and I'm looking into a wondrous other world I've forgotten. And as I stare, I suddenly hear someone, something speaking to me. Something that says, I am with you. Someone who can reach down, pull me out of the pit, bring me home. Hmm. I'm going to stow away away. Alright then. Um... I will say it that kind of explains the the whole uh contradiction between what the puppets are saying and then how Ricky is representing the puppets. That is sock puppet's name, isn't it, Ricky? That's why yeah. The unfriendly neighborhood. <laughs> So it would suggest that the things they're actually saying um, weren't actually written into the original episodes. It was just something that happened afterwards. Which makes a whole lot of sense. Okay. Oh, I have an itch. I have an itch. No! Not enter. Well, I have to <laughs> I think that's behind me. 
I really do not want to turn around. Holy. I think they're stuck. <laughs> okay. Emergency lockdown release. Oh, I see it. Let's go. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay, you can't die. Oh, Jesus. Anyone else? No? Shit. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Oh, my Jesus Christ. Whew. <laughs> it's just red. Oh my god. Oh. This is where I could go. Oh. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> I didn't enjoy that. It's like, oh god, I should have saved. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, final address. Dear children, I am sorry to announce that this will be our final episode. I wanted to take a moment to address you personally so that you may have a final lesson to remember after we're gone. Our world can be hard and scary. It can sometimes be difficult to know what's right and wrong because the world is broken and we're broken too. Our hearts are hollow and dark, unfriendly. There is nothing in this world that can fix us. No beauty, no power, no food, no fame. What we need is for a light beyond our world, the light that is also love, to reach down and seize our hearts and bring us back to itself. In our show, we've tried to give you a glimpse of that light, so the message I want to leave you with is this. Have faith in the light. Sometimes it may be scary, sometimes it may hurt. Sometimes it's hard to know what's right and wrong, because good and bad are all jumbled up and confusing. And when that happens, it can hurt a lot. But have faith in the light, because the light will rescue you from the darkness. Okay. Oh, he did that final address himself. A cheat unlocked. Found five cheat tips. Cool. Winning? Whew. Have I got a map again? Well, I obviously missed something. Oh. <laughs> they don't care. Ah. I didn't get these, did I? This is oddly quiet. Have I done my job? Defeat the boss and escape the unfriendly neighborhood. Oh, I did it. There's a keypad. There's a keypad on that. I've just seen it. I didn't. 
I wasn't given any numbers, was I? Are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> Gordon, you're alive! I'm so proud! Good. I'm leaving. Yes, you should! Job well done, Gordon! Turned off our antenna and survived the unfriendly neighborhood! You're a handyman extraordinaire! Don't Being mock sarcastic. me, Ricky. Yeah. Mock you? I would never. Oh, before you go, I was wondering if you'd do us a favor? Oh? You've been hanging around the studio. You know a little bit about our show. Spit it out, Ricky. I was wondering if you'd help run our studio. What? See, everything's really old and falling apart. Really beyond our ability to care for. And on the personal side, I think it's obvious that we need a bit of a guiding hand. Are you kidding? Gordon, do I look like a sock that would kid? <laughs> Ricky. I'm just a maintenance man. I don't know how to run a studio. Oh, I think you can handle it. It can't be that hard. Be Besides, hard. look at how much you've helped us just since you got here. I talked to the other puppets. Reviews are dazzling. <laughs> what if you end up like them? I don't think we're the ones you should be worried about, Gordon. Come on. Won't you be our neighbor? That's so cheesy. Oh my god, I get a choice? I have to think about this. I feel like this is a really monumental decision. On the one hand, they have really, really questionable morals. <laughs> but, but, um, if what he's saying is true, then they didn't necessarily have those morals until they watched the TV shows that came about after their show was cancelled. So that's why they've been corrupted in a sense. So they've locked everyone that's corrupted essentially in the sub-basement is what, is what I've got from that. Uh, my job sucks <laughs> and I'm on a termination notice if I don't complete this job. So I'm obviously not happy. Uh, this has something to do with the war. I'm assuming then that the war was the main reason that this show's message wasn't received very well. That this was a show that was promoting a positivity and helping hand and all that lot. Well, this war, which was obviously not approved by everybody, was going on at the same time. So you had a lot of dissent at the time when this children's show was trying to be all la -di da happy. So the parents had naturally gone very negative against that, um, which I'm assuming is what's led to it, you know, getting cancelled. Also the fact that its message was becoming slowly and slowly more outdated because you can't be friends with everybody during a war. It's just not... It's it's not realistic. I mean, it, it's a nice message, but I mean, the show is obviously for kids, so I can see why they were running with it. But it's a it's a very repetitive message. So they were too repetitive, and they didn't reflect what was going on at the times, which is assuming is what's led it to be a cancelled show. But now they're showing this side of it, which is that it's gone too far the opposite way. So now there is no brightness like there's no there's there's nothing to inspire the children anymore is basically ricky's argument for going back online so but having said that the puppets are now violent so like can you can they come back from that like because they now show friendliness in a very violent way but is that more suited for these this generation that's living post war is that is that the only way to get a message across because of all the aggression and the negative attention is do you have to be aggressively happy to combat that i think i think that's kind of where it's going with its messages it's it's very it's very strange so now it's like do i want to continue this message and help them get back on the air or do I want to leave and then go back to 
whatever my job was before. I'm assuming though that I'm on I'm on my last legs with the job that I'm on. Like termination notice is kind of like your last your last chance. So he's he's got an abrasive attitude and so he's obviously annoyed his bosses enough. I don't know. I, I'm I'm personally I'm leaning more to more, more towards yes. And um, I think I was gonna click yes anyway, just because this is probably the ending you're supposed to go for, and I do want to see it. But I also think I agree with this ending. Um, it was it's a very empty kind of place. Like the whole when we're on top of the antenna, the streets were kind of empty and everything's dark and dismal and everything. So so yeah, I feel like a place like that could use with. Even if it's overly childish, like a, a little bit of like, you know, <laughs> joy <laughs> and laughter. Even if it comes from murderous cartoon puppets. Um, but I would be interested to know what what the no ending is. Um, yeah, maybe maybe someone will have to tell me what happens if you do that. But I'm going to go with yes. Fine. We'll give it a shot. Oh, Gordon, I'm <laughs> so glad we will have such fun. I'm not living here, though. Well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> oh, Gordon, thank you. Thank you for being our friend. I am bursting at the seams. I must go tell the others at once. Tomorrow night, then? Uh, no, 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 it's no. It's decided. Tomorrow night. See you later, Gordon. Arrivederci. Toodaloo. 23 skidoo. Ciao. Well, Brian, what have you done this time? <laughs> We've made. I helped the neighbors alive. get a slot on More public access TV. It was late night on weekdays. I don't think anyone watched it. Within a couple of weeks, though, word was starting to get out. Some people loved the show, some people hated it. That caught the network's attention. And by the end of the year, we had three channels wanting to sign for a whole season. Aww. Of course, after my boss found out I was involved, <laughs> I, I got fired. fired. <laughs> yeah. But somehow. I feel a little hopeful about it. It's hard to describe. It's like you've been lost in a tunnel. Until suddenly a voice calls your name. And you turn around and you see the rising sun. And it's so bright, maybe it hurts a little to look at. But you don't care. Because it's leading you home. Oh, there was easily enough food there for him to survive. The puppets are getting it from somewhere. <laughs> Surely he'd get the revenue from the network as well. Ooh, I, mean, I don't know if I can leave this song in. <laughs> died six times oh they were so stupid as well it was just me being on the wrong gun of oh, not being fast enough and six hours this is not i want to stress this is not a six hour game if i had found the map every single time i would have blasted through this in probably three four hours like the frustration was just not finding the map in time and when i did find it i oh god i mean i can see how much of an idiot i was but um i have a thing about maps in games i am a i prefer it when they just give it to you right off the bat 
like you know alien isolation for example that is a terrifying game um without a map though i think that would be next to impossible to do <laughs> so the, the the fact that they had big light up podiums and your map was on there you knew exactly where to go to get it um i feel that could have been useful in this game you know just outline the picture frames where the map is you know with, with a light or something or just shine extra bright spotlights on it or something or, or keep it somewhere at the front desk maybe like you know where you'd expect to find it like a visitor's map or just to integrate it into the game a little bit better i think it's it's my only real nitpick because it's the only thing that caused me so much frustration um and I mean, I nitpicked the save system as well, but I honestly think if you just fix the map issue, that fixes the save thing as well, because then you can see how much you've got to you've got to achieve, and you can see how far you'd be knocked back if you die, and it's then you can make that decision whether it's worth it to save or not. So, um, but honestly, I really, really loved playing this game. Uh, this was this was really fun. Um, and it is, it is, it's got that nostalgia thing to it, even though it's not a Muppets thing and it's, it's not, um, whatever the other show is that I never watched, Sesame Street, there we go, <laughs> uh, it's, it's obviously like parodying them, but it's, it's not the same thing, but it still evokes that, that kind of nostalgia from when I did watch these things, um, as a kid, and they did! Some of them did utterly terrify me. I think things like a Barney the Dinosaur, for example, that, is, that was a very, very popular kids' TV show when I was younger with puppets. And I personally find Barney terrifying. <laughs> like, he is terrifying to look at. And I've seen the memes of Big Bird, and I think Big Bird is terrifying as well. There's just something really scary about really tall puppet hand move you know things <laughs> that just have soulless eyes and it's like ugh. so it's a really good idea for a horror game um was this game scary not really <laughs> i get the ending um in the basement i think could have been it definitely could have been scary if that chase scene was longer, that was very short and sweet, and they got stuck. I heard them behind me, like the sound design in this game is is very good. Like it is very good. The, the bangs and the knocks and everything else, that gave it a creepy, creepy atmosphere. But as, a, as an outright horror game, this wasn't really scary in the slightest, at least to me. And um, as you all know, I get scared rather easily. Like, it's got a good few jumps in it. Um, and I said, the sound design, pretty on point. But just the atmosphere is far too colourful. It's far too bright. And unfortunately, um, at the start, you saw when I was playing with less brightness, I was missing doors and details, the puppets lying on the floor. Like, I, I couldn't see them because all you see is pitch black if you play it without raising the the light at all you just cannot see through the shadows it's it's next to impossible so i had to raise the brightness just so i could see what i was doing and that kind of ruined like most of the dark atmosphere i think uh, the most successful parts of the game um atmosphere wise were the sewers they that was really good the the pipes the banging the hissings the noises that was very much really creepy and it was like it's constantly wondering if there's something above me, something behind me, um, you know, the puppets falling out the vents or being locked in lockers and stuff like that. That area, wildly successful. But, you know, the, the hotel and stuff like that, they were just too bright, too colourful, um, to really be scary. And I think they could have done something a lot more with um, Piano Spider's area. I really liked that area and yet it was so small. It was it was tiny but that was it was really cool it was a really cool idea i just wish it'd been like a couple more levels and spider guy wasn't like a threat at all which seemed a bit strange considering we were coming to the end of the 
the series that the last, well second to last kind of big character that we were meeting just wasn't interested in attacking us like at all. And I get it, it could be because he's like, you know, overly childish or, or whatever, or um, maybe he's the friendliest out of all of them, you know, other than the sock puppet, obviously, but I don't know, it just seemed a bit odd that he was the only one that didn't outright try to attack us. Like, I think it would have made more sense if we turned the piano on, for example, and then the music soothed him or something like that. I like, I just, I felt like he should have been chasing us through that area a little bit, um, just to keep us on our toes. Because I, honestly, that was the least stressful area to go through, and it was so linear as well. It was, it was just one big circle and then whoop to the top. <laughs> so it was like, okay. <laughs> um, the big puppet bo boss monster at the end as well. I I liked that. I had a genuine feel of, oh shit, I'm not prepared for this. I had one health tonic on me and I used it. The bombs kept backfiring on me. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna die and I'm gonna have to rethink this. And then it died. I'm like, I know I'm playing this on normal, but considering how tough some of those earlier puppets were and like just the regular puppets the taxi puppet guys they are a nightmare to try and kill it's just in comparison there's there was just some like balance issues there i think i think the, the end boss could have been a lot tougher than that and maybe on like nightmare mode he is but i i just don't know i think in comparison to the rest of the game i've just played on normal like that it, it could have used with a few more health bars like you can make your game tougher than this um even if you're playing on normal mode um like you know make me run through my ammo make me use it all make me panic like <laughs> i had i had so much of that gatling gun ammo left and um, i was out of shotgun guaranteed but you see at the end as well i was i was becoming liberal with my use of shotgun because it was almost a guarantee that i'd get refills for it which is completely opposite to most of the other games I play. Like most of the other games, you're forced to conserve ammo because the further you get, the less you're given. That is not the case here. It's just not. With this one, it's the more you look around, the more you're rewarded for it, which is great. The one thing I kept running out of, as I said, was, was coins for the saves. Um, and I think most of that is because I was saving um, not only for myself, for like, you know, in game for each section, but also to end my videos in <laughs> because. Uh, there's no say there's no save on like the exit screen so you have to save before you can stop recording so it's um it's almost double the amount of saves that I needed um just simply because I needed to finish the episode <laughs> so um I think I, I can definitely do a lot better than that um but yeah as I said as, as a game in general I loved the control system on this one control systems in games for me are just oh they're so hit and miss but this one was super easy. I got it straight away. Um, the the map, the map's the only bit where I'm like, you know, middle mouse scroll buttons exist for a reason, just to flick through. It's better to keep it to the mouse, not to resign it to a keyboard. Um, but that's just, that's just how I'm used to playing. So I think that's the only buttons that I would like maybe reconfigure in the future if I was gonna do this again. Um, because it took me it was like way too long to work out how that map system actually worked and then when I did it's just I, I flew through it I knew exactly where I needed to go and it, it was exactly what I wanted the map to be um. <laughs> but yeah so um, at the cost of maybe repeating myself I really really enjoyed this and I really hope you guys enjoyed it as well I would definitely encourage you guys to go and play this yourself I definitely missed a couple bits here and there. I know I still had the triangle key, which obviously I shouldn't have had. Um, but those rooms only seem to have like um, extra ammo or extra tokens or extra stuff like that in it. Very few of them had um, anything like plot wise or story um, related, which I think is another thing they kind of missed out. And I think I got all the secret tapes because I got an achievement for that so I didn't miss anything like super massive um a few many cheese
I don't think... Oh, speedrun mode, free cam mode, veteran. <laughs> Pull it slow on Mega Wrench. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, no, I have missed some. Oh, I've missed quite a few. Or maybe you have to play on a different, um, a different setting. Anyway, um, I won't be playing the cheat modes on, on, on this one. I, I never do, to be honest, on, on games. I very rarely revisit a game, uh, unless it's like right up there in my top faves. I feel like this one is close. It, it, could get there if it was I think twice the length and I said just a little bit more difficult um, nearing the end just ramped up a little bit more um, but yeah no I, overall I really I really enjoyed this I enjoyed the feel of it um, and yeah I said I hope you guys have enjoyed this as well uh, thank you so much for sticking with me um, the next video to come along will hopefully be another Dead Space video because for some reason you guys really like to watch me scream to that so thank you in advance I'll get on that <laughs> at some point <laughs> so hopefully I'll see you guys next week bye